today with Borough President Gail Brewer, Borough President Eric Adams, Comptroller Scott Stringer, Diana Morales should come over here and be part of this, who's also running for mayor. Uh, I'm really proud that uh, when former public advocate Tish James and Borough President Gail Brewer uh, came to the council and said, we need an independent charter revision commission to look at all of the issues in the city's charter uh, and we want the council to create that, that we work together to create that Charter Revision Commission which put ranked choice voting on the ballot. And the reason why ranked choice voting I think is so important, there are many reasons, is number one, it saves taxpayers money instead of having a runoff a few weeks later with diminished turnout. Number two, it increases candidate diversity where you have all different types of candidates that run at all different levels of office and it encourages uh, folks to run without the fear of splitting the vote, that people can actually choose in order who they like. And we've seen in other places that ranked choice voting actually increases voter enthusiasm. Instead of having to go in and pick one person, voters can go in and rank their choices. But what we want to happen is we want voters to be informed. We want people to know how ranked choice voting works, and that process has to start now. I know that Borough President Adams last week had a press conference with Councilmember Alika Amphrey Samuel talking about the city needing to commit a certain amount of money to educate the public on ranked choice voting. We want to make sure that every voice mattered, every voice is counted, and I believe that New Yorkers are some of the most informed, uh, engaged voters in the world, but we can't let folks not being used to using ranked choice voting going into 2021 not have all the information. And so today is us shining in early light. I still have not decided who my second choice is for mayor. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I accept that. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I really want people to get out there and understand how the system works. It won't be me. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Eric, it's your turn. <laughs> so we want everyone to get all the information that they need. We want everyone to be educated on this. We're going to keep talking about this from now heading into 2021 and we're united, all of us who are running for office across New York City, we're united in saying we want voters to have more information and the Board of Elections does not instill much confidence because time after time after time they have flubbed things. So we want to make sure that early on we're getting out the materials, we're getting out the information so that people understand how ranked choice voting works. We saw it work well in Maine. We've seen it work well in Minneapolis. We've seen it work well in San Francisco. 
they had to do a lot of work preparing for those first elections to make sure that voters understood how it was going to work. We have to do the same thing here in New York City, and I'm really happy to be here with Scott and Gail and Eric and Diana having this conversation today. Thank you very much, Susan. Okay, thank you, Speaker Johnson. We're going to hear from City Comptroller Scott Stringer. Thank you very much. Let me first thank Susan Lerner and Common Cause for bringing us all together and leading the fight uh, for the support group reform. I want to thank Roy Johnson for his number two endorsement today. It means a lot to me. Uh, and uh, Eric, I'm going to talk to you later. But, no, but, but, uh, but look, we are, we are in the midst of a voter revolution. We have seen important measures passed in Albany that creates the opportunity for greater uh, voter participation, early voting, uh, guaranteed absentee balloting. It's likely that we could even have same-day voter registration. The voters of this great city said by 77 percent that they want ranked voting. They want an opportunity to have candidates uh, participate around the city in the totality of our city, going to communities that you may not be from or aware of, and then having that ability to build coalition to get to 50 percent without an expensive runoff. This is real reform. It's reform, as the speaker said that has been successful in other municipalities. This is our opportunity to get it right. Think about 2021 for a second. We're not just electing a new mayor, but a new controller, five borough presidents, most of the city council. This is a true democracy moment for our city that will usher in the next generation of political leadership. So we've got to get it right. And the next logical reform is to make sure that we reach every voter we teach people about the new voting system. We go to all communities. We make sure that when we get to the ballot box in 2021, the people will be assured of how to understand this new important voting measure. It's never easy to educate people, so we don't want to wait to the last minute. That's why I'm supporting the City Council Budget Initiative, uh, and that's why I'm going to work with candidates and elected officials to talk about how we are increasing voter registration. For those who voted uh, early in the last election, it was very exciting. People were out, people were participating, taking advantage of reform. This is the next logical step along the way, but in a democracy, we also need to put our money where our mouth is, and an education opportunity to reach voters now, I think will serve our democracy, and then whoever is successful, I think will benefit from the kind of reforms that will build a majority and a consensus. So thank you, Susan. You led the effort to get this done, and now you're once again leading the effort to ensure that the democracy will work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Comptroller Stringer. I'm so glad that our elected officials are chiming in, really, to emphasize how the city is going to be sure that this works. So we're going to hear now from Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. Thank you very much, uh, Susan. All I can think of is we stood here, I don't know how many times, freezing cold or really hot, uh, in support of the uh, ballot initiative. And I just want to thank Susan Lerner and her staff because it is really thanks to her that it passed. And here we are today, thanks to the city council, the voters, uh, figuring out the ranked code voting is the way to go. And I think people, the reason to be here today is people probably want to know exactly what did they vote for. And now they're going to find out that it's going to be very supportive of what they're interested in, particularly because in 2021, so many seats are up. So you're really going to have a choice. It's not, it's going to be a lot of open seats. So I'm here to thank Borough President Adams, my colleague, Speaker Johnson, Controller Stringer for all coming out on this issue. It's no wonder that our voters in New York overwhelmingly approved ranked choice voting last fall because I believe it will protect the voters. It saves us all from low turnout and costly runoff elections, as you have heard. It also has, as you heard earlier, an excellent track record in other cities and other states. Now we've taken this step toward making our city's democracy stronger. We have to do what we can to make sure that the communities and the voters are informed. That's why we're here today. We have to tell them how it works. The most important is to invest properly in voter outreach and education so that all New Yorkers know the benefits of the new system. 
especially those from historically disenfranchised communities. And I think with the excitement of 2020, even more people will come out in 2021. And it's going to be a little complicated because they have to understand when you vote in municipal, that's different than how you vote from the federal and the state. So we're becoming the largest city in America, as Susan Lerner pointed out over and over and over again, to use ranked choice voting. So let's this one issue of concern, we have to be careful what machines are we going to use and make sure that it's the right machine. The Express Vote XL is the machine with several recorded instances of failure from around the United States. We've got to make sure we get the machine right. Those should not be considered. You always want to have voter marked paper ballots no matter what. That is incredibly important. So the Board of Elections should not approve bad machines. We have to make sure that ranked choice voting is correct on the machine. Whatever machines we use, it has to work. We have to test them. We cannot be like Iowa. We should take the funds directed towards these machines and invest them in the proper education and outreach needed to ensure this new system succeeds from the get-go. Put Susan Lerner in charge. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Gail. <laughs> um, but I do want to emphasize Common Cause is a nonpartisan organization. <laughs> we invited elected leaders here today to help us uh, announce and educate what we hope will be a very broad, well-supported education campaign. And so I'm very happy that our last speaker is going to be Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. And again, I want to echo it's good to have uh, Diana Morales here and the purse of uh, misinterpretation uh, by uh, the controller uh, he is not the number two boy Scott I mean, for Corey is Eric you know so let's keep that clear uh, but no clearly we this announcement was made on Wall Street but the education must take place on all of our streets we cannot prevent the full participation on the entire process of educating voters on ranked choice voting. I have here a letter that I'm going to send off to the mayor. The amount of money that's needed, anywhere from $10 million to $13 million of education. Think about the next election. We're going to have the first citywide election of early voting. The first citywide election of ranked choice voting. We cannot have the first citywide election with these new procedures have new voting machines. The, the Board of Election can't get it right when it drizzles. How are they going to get it right when we have all of these major changes? And that's why we're here today, and we want to ensure that as both the Bar President Gail Brewer and I stood a few days ago to talk about public safety, talk about law enforcement safety. We want to talk about voter safety and voter participation. That's why ranked choice voting is crucial. And if the education is not there, particularly in those communities with a historical low turnout, then every barrier you put in place is going to prevent a full participation in the process where every vote must count. And the only way that vote will count under a system like this, which is a great system of having ranked choice voting, allowing voters to use a ranking system and not have to have another runoff election like we saw during the public advocate race with Scott, with Scott Springer, the public advocate race with um, both, <laughs> right, with both the Dan Squadron and now the Attorney General Letitia James. It is crucial that we focus on proper education, and I want to emphasize that uh, so much. I want to thank uh, the Councilwoman Alika Samuels for seeing the importance of this and looking for, towards legislation, but our focus is on the education. Ranked choice voting education must take place in every area of this city to ensure full participation. Again, thank you, uh, Susan, and your team. The announcement was made here, but the education must take place on all of our streets. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 one announcement. Thank you. <laughs>
We're doing a forum because my goal is to do the education throughout the entire uh, city. So we're going to have a forum. Thank you very much. We're going to have a forum on Thursday, April 2nd from 6 to 8 p.m. at Brooklyn Ball Hall. The goal is to have these forums throughout the entire city. And we're going to reach out to each one of our ball presidents as well as ball president Brewer uh, to have them move forward with these forums. And it's about education, 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 and that is going to increase the participation. Thank you. Stop popping the money there. Okay, thank you. Questions? Is, is there a scenario in which a voter doesn't have to rank their vote, like they could just vote for one person? Yes, absolutely. Um, if this is giving the voter more choices. They can rank up to five, they can vote for only one, or they can vote for two or three, and that is the voter's choice. The, the ballot won't be rejected if you vote for only one. Okay. And then, then just for the folks running for mayor, are you guys at all concerned that this measure will actually end up making it so you guys won't win? Well, <laughs> well. Like, if there is a rank, then maybe you have a certain number of number one voters, and then everyone chooses the same number two, so we end up with the city's second choice instead of, you know, someone who pulls it up and has more. No, it, it's, that's, that's actually the not the way it works. Okay, um, so what happens is that your first choices remain your first choices. Um, the candidates who receive the least number of votes, their second choices are then redistributed. Um, and so you end up with a consensus choice. And the important thing for voters to know is that your choices matter the most when you rank. That you don't just stop at one, you can, but it's best to take advantage of the full five. Other questions, Max? Well, I was just going to ask the speaker if there's any commitment from the council about this funding or... or We're looking into it. I mean, we want to have a conversation, of course, with uh, Common Cause uh, and with other folks that have been involved in this effort to figure out another borough president, put a range out there between 10 and $13 million. We want to figure out, uh, I was just talking to the controller, and he was saying, understandably, you give this to the Board of Elections, who knows if they're going to spend it correctly. So we want to, you know, we want to make sure that whatever money we can appropriate, it goes to the right parties involved so that we get the education done properly. So, uh, I, I'm just curious, I know you guys are talking about public education and giving a ballpark for what this might cost, but what is it exactly that you're, I mean, do you want the city to put together a, some sort of campaign? What is it that you're asking for? Since we know this is going to happen, education or not. Right. So. The Charter gives the Campaign Finance Board the initial responsibility to develop educational materials in the campaign. So we expect that the Campaign Finance Board, which we've already started having discussions with, we use the voter guide. They'll come up with social media, they'll come up with a broad campaign that perhaps will not get into as great a depth as we believe is needed. So what we're hoping to see are opportunities for um, locally based organizations to have materials in multiple languages, in detail, workshops, presentations, uh, funding that allows them to include uh, information about ranked choice voting and the GOTV and canvassing that they do. Public events which take place in every single one of the 51 council districts real organizing around the education effort, not just materials and advertising. And if I could ask the candidates or the would-be candidates what your view of how ranked choice voting will affect your eventual campaigning and how are you thinking about it as you begin to prepare, how do you think it will change the dynamics of how you run a race? I, I think ranked choice voting rewards totality in campaigning. So it really should motivate candidates, not just citywide, but locally, to be in every neighborhood, to talk to every constituency, to try to build that consensus. And I think through the ranked voting lens, we will get a greater debate among all the candidates. People will be in neighborhoods perhaps they didn't prioritize previously because now it's not going to be sort of 
you know, fighting to get 20% to get into a runoff that no one will be voting in, but rather to build a 50% majority. If you think about previous elections, if you look at 1977, if you look at Koch winning the Democratic primary with 20%, and then came um, uh, Mario Cuomo at 19%, 18% was a beam. My cousin Bella Abs at 16.4%, Percy Sutton, 14%. And then if you go into a runoff, put all that out the window. You're going to be working towards 50% on that night, and that will create more participation, better outcome, better consensus, and a real mandate to govern uh, at the end of the day. I wasn't born in 1977, so I can't give you the statistics on that race, but I agree with what the controller said, which is that you have to be in all corners of the city. You're going to have to campaign in every neighborhood, and there are going to be voters that uh, want to vote for other candidates, and you're going to say, can I be your second choice? And have a conversation with them about your vision for the future of New York City. So I think it's a good thing. I think it means that you're going to have the opportunity to speak to more people. Candidates are not going to be able to write off certain boroughs or neighborhoods or demographics. They're going to have to go out there and campaign across the city. And I also think it's going to foster a more positive environment because people are going to actually want to talk about the issues and, uh, you know, and not be uh, personal in the way we've seen in previous campaigns. So I think that's a good thing. A little, little optimism on the part of my uh, our two friends here. Trust me, it's going to be a dirty campaign. <laughs> but the, the key here, uh, a good system becomes a great system when you spread the information. And no matter how good ranked choice voting is, if we're not in the bodegas, if we're not in the mosque, if we're not in the synagogues, if we're not in the churches, if we're not speaking to all the people, then we're going to have a layer of people who are well educated, know how to read the voter guides, know how to get the information, and we're not going to have the information on the ground. That's why it's important to use non-traditional methods of communicating with people. Everyone, as hard as it is to believe, everyone does not get their information from the New York Times. Some people get their information from their local communities, and that's where the money needs to go. I don't want this money going to the, Depart the Board of Ed Election. It needs to go to grassroots organizations. We already have those organizations in place because of the census. Let's duplicate those same organizations and have them go into the community. So I, I am concerned about the information not getting to everyday voters. Uh, the voters like my mother, the voters like my seniors in my senior centers, those who are not tech savvy. Every voter is not on Twitter. Many of them need this information, and that is why we're going to lead in doing so, and that's what I'm hoping the money is going to go to, so that people can make the decisions based on speaking to those who are running and not the opposition research that people are going to be planning to you in the press. I just want to add one thing. I'm active in